Last time on The China Current, I told you about the connection between the sweep of the artist's paintbrush and my own violin bow stroke. In this episode, I'll be looking at the ancient art form of Chinese calligraphy and the intricacy of the brush stroke. I'm Tasman Little, violinist, recording artist and culture contributor for The China Current. The ancient art form of Chinese calligraphy is viewed as one of the most important forms of traditional arts, and such is its significance that a piece of calligraphy is considered a work of art in itself and valued above that of paintings. The use of the brush dates back to the Qin dynasty, when the script was standardised, and by the time of the Ming dynasty, more importance was put on the artistry of the calligrapher than the text that was represented. In Chinese culture, the natural world features strongly, and different styles of stroke are assigned poetic names, such as playful butterfly, dewdrop, leaping dragon, and milling waves. There are eight basic strokes, as well as different categories, embodying qualities such as bone, flesh, muscle, and blood. Blood is the wetness or dryness of the stroke. Muscle denotes the strength of the stroke, Bone represents the structural layout and flesh suggests the weight or thickness of the stroke. Like Western handwriting, it's widely regarded that a person's personality is evident from their style of calligraphy. The finest examples of calligraphy are inscribed on stone tablets called steels, and students can take away their own rubbing of the stone with wax over paper. For example, there are a large number of steels at Chu Fu, the birthplace of Confucius. These classic texts of Chinese literature were inscribed in the year 175 CE, near Luoyang, an ancient capital of China. 200,000 characters were engraved on 46 stone slabs, a process that took eight years to complete. In calligraphy, the characters are drawn in a specific and essential order, top to bottom, left to right. And this routine is akin to the scales that violinists practice in order to achieve technical proficiency. All arts have points of connection, but of course it is down to the performer or artist to imbue their creations with energy, emotion, imagination, character and spirit. And whether it be placing a bow across the strings in a room full of thousands of people, or bringing colour and life to the white spaces on paper with a brush. Each art form also requires discipline and a profound respect for the craft and culture shared with art. I'm Tasmin Little. I first travelled to China some 40 years ago. Join me as I continue that adventure on The China Current. <laughs>